I'm going to do my decade in review. I, I probably won't get to make these often, but uh, today I will. As the decade 2000 to 2009 comes to a close, I say goodbye to the first full decade of my life. And frankly, I'm not so impressed. I expected a little bit better. Now, my personal life has been great, with the exception of the death of my grandmother. But everything else is, for the most part, is just, um, fine and dandy. But let's talk about world affairs. Those are the things that really sucked. Let's start right at the beginning with 2000. Now, during the 2000 election, Al Gore, <coughs> sorry, Al Gore won by the popular vote by 2%, and actually got more than 50% of the vote, which didn't happen for 12 years due to Ross Perot's candidacy. But anyway, he still lost the presidential election because I think the Secretary of State of Florida wanted to halt the recount and just have Bush win. And to this day, I think that Al Gore would have won if it weren't for a partisan decision. So I'm like, oh, that really sucks, but... <coughs> Bush might be fine, too. Well, looked like everything might have been going dandy until the 9-11 attacks. Now, Bush is reading, like... Let's just take this bio book for a second. You know, he was reading his bio book to the children. Mm-hmm. Well, it was actually like a fairy tale or something. And the guys say, Sir, you're under attack. But I gotta keep reading to them kids. So he just continues reading while 3,000 people die. And that's the story that the media tells you. But, uh, I don't know. It's, government's very shady. Anyway, so uh, what does he do? Instead of um, going after the countries where these attackers came from, such as our allies, Saudi Arabia and Egypt, he decides to, um, and this, I'm not saying this was a bad decision, but he decides to overthrow the Taliban in Afghanistan. I mean, they're an evil regime, but they had absolutely nothing to do with the attacks, which was his justification for the war. And, um, and then, in 2003, he got the entire country to approve of him starting a meaningless war at, at, under false pretenses. There were no weapons of mass destruction to be found, as he said. And... <coughs> And the only other objective was to get Saddam Hussein, who he blamed for 9-11, out of power, which he did. And then we stayed there. And we still are there, but we're pulling out in 2011. Obama's decision. So 2004 comes along, and um, yeah, by then I was a die-in-the-wool bleeding heart Democrat. I supported Kerry all the way. Not that I was too excited about him, but hey, he's got to be better than Bush. So you know I'm watching, and this time it's Ohio. And <coughs> it's a little bit more decisive <coughs> than the last election. But hey, I you never know. This will be, both elections could have been rigged because this. This guy had to be in office under false pretenses. I mean, look at him. A monkey could do better. So, Kerry loses both in the popular and electoral votes and goes back to being 
when he was the senator of Massachusetts, serving with Ted Kennedy. <coughs> so, <coughs> rather quickly, Bush's approval ratings drop. Like, if the election were held about a month later, Bush would have lost. That's how bad it got. And, uh, soon after, throughout his administration, he controlled House and Senate and the presidency. But then, the House and Senate pretty much ceded control to the Democrats after, the, after they uh, had a realigning election. And then caused a two-year period of dysfunction with a with a very unnecessary bailout and nothing got done at that point and then Obama came along and there's this whole debacle between him and Hillary which uh, in retrospect Hillary would have caused a lot less trouble but hey Obama is cool too so he wins the primaries, he goes up against John McCain, he decisively wins the charisma battle, and he wins the election with 53% of the popular vote, which is a lot. So, I cried during his inaugura inaugural speech. That's how moved I was. That's how excited I was for change. But, uh, lo and behold, he got us out of Iraq, which was good, and he promised to get out the Guantanamo detainees by, like, two weeks from now, which he can't. He hasn't really followed through on that, because he had bigger fish to fry. He first disappointed me with the health care <coughs> thing. Because I'm a big fan of single payer healthcare, and it didn't happen. They didn't. They didn't even try to get it through. That's how bad it was. Instead, they got this thing called a public option, which is rather stupid in retrospect. And then the public option made conservatives show their incredibly racist colors. And so Obama was like, Oh no! So they took out the public option and Howard Dean was like, Kill this goddamn bill, which I, I'm a big fan of Howard Dean. I support that all the way. They passed it without a public option. Reform, the f reforms basically mean nothing. And then, there's this whole big debacle in Afghanistan. And I support them getting out. They already did their job in 2001. We're not doing anything by staying there. And yet he sends 35,000 more troops to do Bush's surge tactic. <coughs> and it, <coughs> it only got worse. Military suicides went up. And the death toll went up. Not good. And now, we're here in December 31st, and I just gotta hope 2010 to 2019 will be a much better year. Thank you for listening, and um, Happy New Year.